Number 98. Which of these molecules and ions contain polar bonds? And which of these molecules and ions have a dipole moment? And then we have SF2. So I guess we should answer the first question first, right? We want to find out if there are polar bonds in SF2. Now, when we're talking about bonds, we're talking about either single or double or triple bonds that exist between two uh, elements in the molecule, right? But if I'm looking at SF2, uh, where's the bonds? Do you see them? I don't see them. So my suggestion to you is, even though they don't ask for it, right? If you have a covalent compound, just take a few seconds and draw the Lewis structure. Lewis structure is going to have a lot of answers, whether you're dealing with polar, nonpolar bonds, dipole moments, polar, nonpolar molecules, um, hybridization, molecular geometry. You can get a lot of information from looking at a Lewis structure. So that's what we're going to do. Now, in this case, there's tons of videos on the channel that walks you step by step uh, to find out how to find, a, you know, write a Lewis structure. And I'm there every step of the way. Um, so if you do need more guidance, you could always check out those videos. But for this one, maybe if you want, pause the video, see if you can draw this out, and then see if your answer matches mine. So let's start. Sulfur's got to be in the middle because fluorine is never in the middle. It's too electronegative. You're surrounded by two fluorines. And for this, each fluorine has a single bond. And then you'll have the six dots around each fluorine to get it to be the um, octet. And then sulfur also needs four dots to get the octet as well. And that's the Lewis structure. But now you can see that there's two of the same bonds, right? There's two F to sulfur bonds. There's two of the same. It doesn't really matter. So you could just draw one of them. So I guess I'll just say F bound to S. Now, when you want to search for a polar bond, just know that you just take the electronegativity differences of the two atoms that are in that bond. And remember, a difference is just subtraction. So you're going to subtract the electronegativity uh, values between the two elements in the bond. And if it fits in between 0.4 and 1.8, your bond is polar, which means that the electrons in the bond are not evenly split. They would be always uh, getting pulled towards the more electronegative element. So let's just see. Fluorine, most electronegative element on the periodic table with a 4.0 ranking. Um, there we go. And then sulfur is coming in with a 2.5. Now, for your electronegativity differences, um, my suggestion is to take the higher number and subtract by the lower number because those differences, you can't have a negative. So if you do the lower number minus the, the bigger number, you'll get a negative, but just know that your electronegativity differences are always the absolute value, which is positive. So I'm going to take my 4.0 minus it from my 2.5, and I get a 1.5 as my answer. And 1.5 falls way polar. The bound is up until 1.8. So we know that we have a polar bond here. And that means that the electrons in this bond are way more closer to fluorine because it's more electronegative. All right, so the first part is done. Now we just have to find out, well, whether we have a dipole moment or not. Now a dipole moment can only be found when now we're just taking it out of the bond realm and we're looking at this molecule as a whole. Dipole moments mean that as a whole, there is a, um, a pull of electrons towards one side of the molecule. So if you do have a dipole moment, you will be a polar molecule. So that's where SNAP comes into play, S-N-A-P. If your molecule is completely symmetrical and there's no pole in electrons, it will be classified as a nonpolar molecule and you will not have a dipole moment. But if your molecule is asymmetrical, it is classified as polar and that has the dipole moment. So now there's a really, really big key piece of information that I want to tell you guys here is that before you even look at, you know, 
who is on the outside, always start with your central atom. Because if your central atom has lone electrons, so you're looking for those dots. If your central atom has dots, right off the bat, that molecule is going to be polar. You might say to yourself, well, I have two fluorines, right? So they cancel out. That's symmetry. But the chlorine in the middle, mm -mm, it's got two lone pairs. It's got four total dots. This has to be polar, no exceptions. So since that sulfur does have lone electrons, it is classified as a polar molecule. And because of that, this molecule will have a dipole moment. It is not completely symmetrical. So somewhere on the molecule is going to be more electronegative, and somewhere on the molecule is going to be more electropositive. And there you go. That's the answer for this one. What'd you think? Thank you for viewing the video, and I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I will talk to you in the next lesson. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. Just gets the word out there in this YouTube universe that this, you know, this channel exists. Thank you so much, and I hope you're having a great day. Okay, bye-bye.